live from Las Vegas, it's theCUBE, covering AWS reInvent 2019. Brought to you by Amazon Web Services and Intel, along with its ecosystem partners. Oh, welcome inside, live here at the Sands as we continue our coverage here at AWS reInvent 2019 on theCUBE. Day three, always an exciting time, I think, to get a, a summary of what's happened here. Dave Vellante, John Walls, we're joined by a couple of gentlemen from Immuta. Uh, Stephen Tao, who's the co-founder and CTO. Steve, good to see you. Yeah, thanks for having me. And Rob Lancaster, who's the GM of cloud at Immuta. And Rob, thanks for joining Great us as well. Yeah, guys. First off, let's talk about Immuta a little bit. Uh, you're all about governance, right? You're trying to make it simple, easy taking out the complexity, but for those at home who might not be too familiar with your company, tell us a little bit about you. Yeah, so the company started out, our roots are in the US intelligence community, so we had been dealing with access and control issues for data for years, and we said to ourselves, hey, this product, this product has to be useful for um, you know, non-IC customers, this, this problem has to exist. And with the advent of all these privacy regulations like CCPA, GDPR, and of course HIPAA's been around for a long time, um, really our goal was to bring a product to the market that makes it easy to govern access to data in a way that you don't have to be technical to do it, you don't have to understand how to write SQL statements, you don't have to be a system administrator. Um, we really bring together three personas, the users, that want to get access to the data, legal and compliance, and needs to understand how the rules are being enforced or even enforce them themselves, and then of course the data owners and the DBAs um, who need to expose the data. So usually those three personas that are at odds with one another, yep. we bring them right. together in our platform and allow them to work together in a way that's compliant and also um, accelerates their, their data analytics. Got it. Yep. Can we talk a little bit about why this is such a problem? Because it is a big problem, I mean, especially today and in the cloud, and we'll get into that. But you've got data lakes, or whatever you want, data oceans now. You've got data coming in, all types of data. It might be internal transaction data, it might be stuff in your data warehouse, and then organizations say, well, <clears throat> I want some other data. I want to bring in you know, maybe some social data. So certain data is everybody can have access to, certain data not everybody can have access to, and, it, and it's not necessarily just a security problem. You know, there are edicts of my organization that need to be enforced. So, first of all, is that sort of, the problem that you're solving, and maybe you can you know, double click on that a little bit. Yeah, sure, so the, um, the market has evolved and is, as it is evolving, you allude to uh, data lakes. I mean, uh, I think you can point to the immersion of Hadoop as a distributed infrastructure as kind of the original data lakes or the most recent data lakes where you can store all your data and run analytics on all your data. Um, and now with the advent of the emergence of cloud, you've effectively got uh, very low, if not zero cost storage, um, and the ability to throw an unlimited amount of compute at the data. Um, that, uh, kind of in conjunction with heightened awareness for consumer data privacy and risk associated with data has created a market for uh, data governance um, beyond kind of the coarse grain access controls that people have been using on their databases for decades now. Yeah, I mean, Hadoop really got it all started, you're, yep. you're right, and despite all its problems, it had some you know, real uh, epiphany-like technical innovations, but one of the things that it didn't worry about at the time was governance. Right. So, so whose responsibility is this? Is it, this, is it the CISO that is essentially trying to build out a, you know, a new cloud stack to, to provide security, privacy, governance, and what does that stack look like? Good. Yeah, so it's, it depends. So it's actually um, pretty uh, interesting that different organizations tackle this different ways. So we have CISOs that, um, maintain this and other organizations. We've got the legal and compliance teams that want to do this but maybe don't have the technical chops. So it's kind of, and the CSISO doesn't necessarily know all the privacy rules that need to be enforced. So it's kind of moving into this world where security is about you know, keeping the bad guys out and black or white access. Like you either can see the data or you won't. But with, with privacy controls, it gets into this gray area where there's a lot of technical complexity and there's a lot of legal complexity. Um, so the organizations struggle with this because you've got to play in that gray area where it's, it's not just, like I said, black and white. The analogy we use is um, security is like a light switch. You're either in or you're out. With, with uh, privacy controls, you need to anonymize the data. You need to do privacy by design. It's like a dimmer switch where you, you want to play in that gray area and allow some utility out of the data um, but also protect privacy at level, differing levels of whatever you're doing analytically. So this can be challenging for an organization 
to wrestle with because it, it's not as, I would argue it's not as black and white as, as it is with security. So your question so, is, is, the, is, in many cases, it's the business right. that's running really fast and that is building these data lakes because they want to get value out of their data and uh, the CISO or the compliance or risk officers uh, are the ones that are telling them to slow down. Uh, so our, our product, as Steve, as Steve said, uh, caters to both parties. It checks the boxes for risk, uh, but it also enables the business to get utility out of their data lake. It's a very it's complicated like, situation because you've got this corpus of data that's organic and constantly changing, right. and you have, you mentioned GDPR, you've got California now, put, every state's going to have its own regulations, so you've got to be able to sort of adjudicate that. Yep, right. and, and can you talk about, I mean, I, I, obviously I, I've, I've interviewed Matt, Carol, we covered you guys, so I know a little bit about you, but can you talk about your tech in terms of its ability? You've got a, a capability to do really granular level uh, understanding and governance policies. Can you describe that a little bit? Yeah, sure, so um, when we talk about privacy controls, these are things like way beyond just table level access. So instead of saying, hey, you have access to this table or not, or even you have access to this column or not, you've got to go deeper than that. You've got to be able to make rows disappear based on um, what people are doing. So for example, we have financial institution customers that are using us for all their trading data, and only some traders can see some trade desks. And we manage all that dynamically. We're not making anonymized copies of data. Um, everything happens at query time. Um, and depending on what compute you're using, that, that all works differently. Um, but then at the column level, we're able to do these anonymization techniques. Like we could make numeric data less specific. We could use techniques like k-anonymization that allows um, analysts to analyze the data but ensures that small groups um, that exist in that data won't reveal someone's uh, true identity. Um, and we have techniques like differential privacy, which provides mathematical guarantees of privacy. So, um, for example, one of our manufacturing customers set aside, these are the four analytical use cases that we're um, using our data for, and under GDPR, we want different levels of privacy associated to those use cases. So they could do that all with Immuta. They're, so they could say, when I'm doing this, I want these columns to be anonymized to this level and these rows to disappear, but if I'm doing something maybe um, more critical, um, which our consumers have consented to, you know, there's less privacy controls. And that all happens dynamically. So the analysts can actually switch context of what they're doing and get a different view of the data and all that is audited. So we understand why someone's doing what they're doing and when they're running queries, we can associate those queries to purpose. Yeah, we've talked about customers, of course, and, and they're adapting, right, to a new world. How are you adapting? I mean, what are you learning about in terms of policy regulation and governance, what have you? And, and, you said you came out of the intelligence community, high bar there, right? Yeah. Um, so what have you done to evolve as a company and what are you, as the headlights basically for these folks, what are you seeing change that is going to require a lot of shift on the other side? Yeah, so I don't know if you have thoughts. Well, I mean, it's, it's, a great, it's a great question, but there's really two parts to it. There's what are we doing, but um, what is the market doing as well, right? Okay. So if you think about um, when we got started, even a year ago, uh, people understood the technology, they thought it was cool, but maybe a little niche for government or financial services or maybe healthcare because there's well understood regulation, these vertical regulation. Um, even over the past year with uh, kind of this increasing or heightened awareness for consumer data privacy, not just driven by uh, CCPA and GDPR, but um, kind of this called the Facebook effect, right? Cambridge Analytica has, has created this uh, awareness within the general population for what are these organizations actually doing with my data. Before it was okay because you give your data to Google and you get a better search result and you're okay with that. Uh, but now they may, they may be using your data for their own profit in different ways. So this has created this rising tides effect for the overall market. And we, uh, we talk a lot about uh, organizations using something like Immuta to protect, to protect their highly sensitive data. I like to think of it as their most valuable data, mm -hmm. which may be their highly, which may be highly sensitive, but it also could be the crown jewels uh, trading data for a bank, for example. Um, so it's become about extracting value and operational benefit from data, um, whereas you know the, the the risk offices are trying to lock it down in many cases. So uh, there's, there's definitely a big a big problem, and people are becoming more aware of it. I want to talk about where you guys fit into this whole cloud ecosystem. There's there's a sea change now. Is this sort of there's new cloud coming into play. It was, it's not just about infrastructure anymore. And I'll give you some examples. You got all these data lakes, you got, maybe you got Redshift running, Snowflake's another one. Uh, you've now got this data exchange where you can bring in data right in the cloud, bring in all kinds of different types of data. 
Uh, you're bringing in some ML and AI, and it's, it's all really, again, a complicated situation. So I see you guys as fitting in there in, right. in, in real need, but can you describe where you fit in the ecosystem, what your relationship is with AWS? You know, how, how do I engage with you? Yeah, absolutely. So, um, core part of our value is that we are heterogeneous in terms of the environment that we support. Um, we support a hybrid estate, so the architecture of the product is fully microservices based, so we can run on-prem uh, as well as on cloud, on any cloud. We support effectively any popular database system or an analytical tool. Uh, so think of us as a data abstraction layer across a hybrid environment. So we're here because AWS is obviously um, the big boy in the market, they have market share. This is a strategic relationship for us. Uh, we're working very deeply with uh, AWS field teams, particularly around some of their verticals, the verticals that align to, to our business. Uh, and you know, at the end of the day, we're, we're trying to define a category. Uh, it's, it's a similar category that, that we've had for, for, uh, for decades, but with all the, the changes that, that are happening in data and regulation and infrastructure, um, what we're trying to do is, is raise the level of awareness uh, uh, for the fact that Immuta has actually solved the problem that many of these risk officers are, uh, are struggling with today. Yeah, and from a, a, diving a little on the technical side of that answer is that we are, think of us as the way to enforce policy in the cloud. We consider ourselves a cloud first software vendor um, and you don't necessarily want one point solution in Redshift or another point solution on your on-premise Cloudera instance, Wh whatever it may be where you're using your data and, and running analytics, you need to abstract the policies out into a consistent layer and then have the, them be enforced across whatever you're using. So you might be using Cloudera today and then you switch to Databricks tomorrow, that shouldn't be a hard change from you from a policy perspective. You just repoint a muta at Databricks and all your policies are still working like they used to. So it gives you this flexibility now to use all these different services that AWS provides because uh, as was stated in the keynote on Tuesday, there's no one database solves all. You're always going to be uh, using a heterogeneous uh, um, set of compute to do your job and analytics. Um, so you need a consistent way to enforce policies across all That's that. a great point. I mean, I don't know if you saw the Vanguard guy today in the keynote, he basically said, we ripped down our, we tore down our big data infrastructure, moved it to the cloud, spun up EMR. I mean, there's a perfect example of, right. you got to bring your governance with you. You can't have to you know, rebuild right, exactly. that whole stack. Um, are you in the marketplace yet? Yes. yes. You are, great, awesome. Yeah, we launched a, uh, a managed version of Immuta over the summer on AWS Marketplace. Um, we'll be launching a second one um, shortly, and it's really, the, the, the offering that we have out there is really geared toward, um, for lack of a better term, democratizing data governance. Uh, it's actually free uh, up to the fifth user, so any organization uh, can deploy Immuta uh, in under 30 minutes through Marketplace and start protecting their data. That's great, we had Dave McCann on yesterday, he runs the Marketplace, he was telling us there's now private offers for every Marketplace, right. you know, so ISV, so that's, right. that's what I'm, uh, last question I have is, is, how do you see this all shape, you know, playing out? You got GDPR, you got, maybe you talked about California regulations, there's the technology component. Any, any like, predictions you guys want to share? Or what's, what's your uh, telescope say? All data will be regulated data, <laughs> eventually. <laughs> um, so, if you're not thinking about that now, you, you need to. Um, so, uh, at least that's our theory, obviously. So, so, we think it's critical that you're doing that from day one instead of day 365 in, in your migration strategy. And if you're not thinking about that, it's going gonna, it's gonna to potentially bite you in the end. Yeah, you're right. I mean, Web 2.0 was the wild, wild west. There was no privacy, there was no regulation. GDPR started to get people focused on that. And it's yep. now yep. Yep. a whole new world. Good deal. Gentlemen, thank you. Appreciate the time and uh, best of luck. I know you said you had the big launch this summer, but uh, good things are ahead, no doubt. Yeah, for sure, thank, thank you. For the time. Thanks guys. Back with more coverage here on theCUBE. You're watching NWS reInvent 2019. We are live and we're in Las Vegas.